Hello, uh, my name is Jasmine Iona Brown. I'm one of the artists here at the exhibit. And uh, the truth that my pieces address um, are the, how many of our young people are lost to violence, be that uh, p uh, police brutality or inner city uh, crime. And I do memorial icons. And um, I focused on several subjects uh, that were killed in Chicago. Um, one uh, young woman uh, that was jumping uh, rope in front of her house with her cousin. Uh, and, and it was a drive-by, or well, a roll-by shooting. The two assailants were on, uh, on their bikes and they drove by and opened fire. Uh, and she was killed. Her cousin was also shot. Her cousin survived. Um, and uh, I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, so I, we hear a lot of the news from uh, Chicago uh, there, and uh, I was really struck by that, that she was doing something as ordinary as jumping rope in front of her house, which as a, as a, a little girl I did, I don't know how many times, with my friends, and the idea that you couldn't even be safe when you're at home in your front yard. Um, I also did a piece uh, on Darion Albert, who was uh, killed uh, by somebody, I think, believe, hit in the head off with a board uh, in a conflagration uh, in, the, uh, in the street. Um, and uh, I did one, also another a piece about Emmett Till, um, which was a, a lynching, um, and a, uh, another that was uh, focused on Rwanda. Um, and it's called um, A Land of a Thousand Hills and 800,000 Gone. And I actually used a living model for, for that piece, uh, a South African um, boy, you know, uh, for that one. Uh, I wanted to do a piece about Rwanda, but I could only find online pictures of desiccated corpses. And I didn't want to portray the victims of that genocide as what their bodies became. Uh, after that tragedy, I wanted to show, depict them with some degree of dignity, and for that uh, I used a, uh, a model. Um, and there's one piece of an adult that's here in the show uh, that's uh, John T. Williams, a Native American woodcarver that, that was killed uh, uh, by a, a Seattle a PD officer. Um, and I, I wanted to, to I, I picked icons as, as the venue to kind of discuss these issues because I think the media often portrays um, these tragic killings with a kind of dispassion or voyeuristic curiosity that uh, doesn't truly convey the loss that the families feel and the community feels behind uh, these uh, senseless killings. Um, I also uh, lost my um, two, two foster sons in 2008. Um, they were killed leaving a Halloween party, uh, shot down with an automatic uh, weapon. I was, believe it was an AK um, by another teenager. And uh, they didn't live long enough to see the first black, black, black president get elected. And um, they died at 18 and 19. Um, and the, later on, I found out that there had been a uh, crime series drama made about their killings. Uh, A&E does a series called Crime 360. And evidently, they were trailing along with one of the detectives that night. And they showed footage of uh, my foster son Charles's uh, body laying on the sidewalk. Um, and they reenacted the, the shooting uh, using CG and talked about bullet trajectories and all that, like it was this uh, episode of CSI. And it, there was no regard for the fact that these young men were loved. Um, and I don't see that kind of coverage when the victims of crime are white. Um, for, 
for example, Sandy Hook, they did they don't sh didn't show the video footage of uh, the, uh, the children and teachers who were murdered inside of that school. I'm sure they have it somewhere. Uh, not that I would want to see that, but the fact that you know coverage of of the investigation from uh, my foster son's murder was packaged in a box set and you can buy it on iTunes for 99 cents as if it's entertainment. Uh, I found that really disturbing and I wanted to try to make an effort to talk about this issue that we have in our country with, with uh, violence, uh, be it from police or other people in the neighborhood or um, or even overseas, I got uh, in a genocide in Rwanda. I wanted to talk about that in a way that really honors the victims and elevates them to the level of modern day saints and martyrs. Um, and it was, I've uh, shown these pieces around in, in several venues around town, um, community colleges and municipal buildings and, and uh, um, museum, one of the wing of the museum, actually has one of my pieces I did about, about Syria. Um, but I, I was really happy to be a part of this show um, because this was an opportunity to exhibit with so many other African American artists. And to realize that I'm part of a large community, I often feel so isolated. And I, and usually at, at arts events, I'm the only person of color in the room, in the room here in Seattle. And uh, it was really wonderful to be a part of such a huge community and to realize that, um, you know, I'm a part of, uh, I think, a movement of African American artists here in the Pacific Northwest um, whose work is, is not afraid to deal with issues, it's not afraid to deal with race, uh, it doesn't choose to ignore um, uh, larger societal issues. And my work was accepted and embraced here. And uh, I now know that I'm a part of a community of, of, uh, of African American artists, and I'm hoping that we'll all you know, keep in touch in the future, and maybe uh, this will spawn a series of shows. And have our King Street Renaissance right here. <laughs> Thank you.